Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. These are my top 10 favorite EPs of 2016. At number 10 is probably one of the weirdest pop records this year. It's a weird, abrasive, explicit twist on usual synth pop songs about love. From the PC Music Pop Collective, it's Girlfriend of the Year with the Call Him a Doctor EP. Hello. As I just said, Girlfriend of the Year is definitely the most explicit and unpredictable and most abrasive member of that collective, but I think that's a really nice twist on the usual PC music vibe. Because usually the artists under that label are a little more effervescent, a bit more bubbly, a little more fun, a little more friendly. But not Girlfriend of the Year, you'll be getting a lot of stuff that's gonna buzz in your ears like a beehive just landed on your head. There are nonsensical lyrics, sexually explicit moments, Tracks that can often be just pure noise. It often takes the cutesy aesthetic of some pop music and just makes it a little more unsettling to listen to. But all the way through, it's constantly interesting. I mean, that's got to be a plus, right? And number nine, I've got to give it to my boy, Khan Bateki, vaporwave artist from Perth, Australia, who put out a couple of EPs this year that I wasn't too fond of. Some of his albums were deliberately empty and stagnant, which didn't exactly click with me personally, but one of his EPs this year did actually make me, you know, kind of want to groove a little bit, want to dance, get up, and just kind of do one of those, you know. Uh, it's the uh, Big City Nights EP, and it's pretty damn cool. It's funky, it's a little disco inspired, and giving it that smoky aesthetic you'd associate with vaporwave music. But I just thought it was really cool that Khan Bateki took some time to actually, you know, put out something that's a little bit more upbeat. A little more cheerful than his usual content. Not to devalue his more somber, sorrowful content, but this was a nice little project to kind of shake things up a little bit, you know. You know, some songs here are quite tropical, you know, you could be sipping on your co coconut water, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what I'm saying. At number 8, I'm going to shine some light on that Nine Inch Nails EP that came out just uh, around Christmas. Nine Inch Nails, you know, coming back with a lot of noise, grit, just like the hard-hitting industrial rock that just, <laughs> just makes you want to bite through a bike chain. A couple of tracks here kind of make me think of swans, like filth material, that kind of stuff. I just thought it was really cool and gritty and very promising for the material that Nine Inch Nails are probably going to be delivering anytime soon. Hopefully next year, because I, I, oh man, Woo! I'm ready. Number seven, it's uh, the pop princess herself, Carly Rae Jepsen, with the Emotion B-Sides. Two thousand fifteen brought about one of the best pop albums, probably of the decade. Honestly, Emotion. It's taken that eighties synth pop and making it fresh, making it friendly, making it a little bit uh, adorable. To be honest, a lot of fun going on here. And it turns out Kylie Jepsen had written quite a lot of songs, so she took some of the best ones and just put them on this EP here that kind of folded things up. And the material is just as strong. But I just think it's really cool that something as colourful, bouncy, effervescent and bubbly as Kyler Ray Jepsen's Emotion B-Sides were released this year because now that Emotion has won me over, I'm, I'm now very much looking forward to the next group of songs that Kyler Ray Jepsen's planning to put out uh, sometime in the future. At number 6, Clarence Clarity, the experimental R&B glitch pop artist fooled around a little bit with his EP, uh, it's called Same, every track on it is titled Same, and they are all the same. Or are they? There's a really interesting concept behind it, even though it's a little more tongue-in-cheek, a little more satirical, I guess. I do have a review of it where I talk about it in a lot more detail but the song on the EP that's repeating over and over again is actually a very very good song it was in my top 50 favorite tracks of the year it's basically like a mishmash a melting pot 
of different cliches and instruments that you would associate with pretty much any genre of music ever. Shoegazy guitars, glockenspiels, spoken word interludes, even the equivalent of a dubstep drop. Plenty of things going on and yet this song isn't messy, it's actually very upbeat, catchy and coherent and cohesive in its own right. Now we're at the top five, got to give it to Flume, Australian producer Flume, who in my eyes put out a fantastic album called Skin earlier this year, kind of brought wonky music to the mainstream, which was very ambitious, considering wonky isn't exactly the most accessible genre of music, but Flume, you know, pulled it off quite well. However, the glitchier side of that album was like, pretty much my favourite part of that album. So it was great that Flume followed up this Skin album with a Skin Companion EP. <laughs> carries the same icy aesthetic, it's off kilter, it's a little bit glitchy, the tracks are pieced together extremely well, especially songs like Heater and V, which I would consider, you know, material that could have easily made the cut on Skin. I was just very impressed with the Flume companion EP for Skin, so well done, Flume. Yeah. And number four, Clipping with Wriggle. Clap, clap, that mouth shut, bounce for your boy, rip for your girl, scream for your life, beg for a minute, live it like a man, I get another one, the loving in your body, only the beginning of it, let him know that you can show off, show off, work, show off. The noise rap outfit clipping basically made the most accessible project yet, but it is still like absolutely fantastic. You're still getting that same creative production, like on the song Shooter, which is using different gun noises during the beat. I just thought that was a really cool concept. Some of Clipping's catchiest songs are on here, like Wriggle. Also, the most sexually explicit, can't forget that. And at uh, number three, it's the Vince Staples EP, Prima Donna, which is a very twisted, nutty little rap EP that is very well structured as an EP. It, it tells a story, but in reverse order. It's basically going backwards through the life of maybe someone who starts off as a top dog, but then goes on a, like a mental downward spiral to the point where he's brought to suicidal thoughts. Who the activist and who the devil's advocate? But do it matter shit. They only fucking with the rap if the rapper rich. I got a platinum hit. Chain of tools, seen the music in a change. The production is very twisted, as I said before, quite nutty. But, you know, Vince Staples' performances are fantastic. And obviously, if you play the tracks in reverse order, the actual events of the story will be a little more clear. They'll just fall into place, and you'll be a little more disturbed by the gunshot you heard in the first track. And number two, it's a very underrated Belfast trio, Electric Octopus, with two EPs actually, but they're both fantastic, I reviewed both of them in one video earlier on in the year. This is our culture, and Under a Black Moon. With tracks that go over the 20 minute mark, you know, you kind of worry, is my attention going to be able to be kept for that length of time? With Electric Octopus, they pull it off, they combine psych rock, funk rock, jazz, it's very soothing, very relaxing, but they actually do like keep a lot of tension in their music, they pick up the pace occasionally, a lot of it is quite improvised, but it's, it flows together so seamlessly that, you know, I just, oh, it's so good. This Is Our Culture is kind of the more um, relaxing one, whereas Under a Black Moon is more subtle, a little darker, a little more shadowy. They're just really solid EPs that I would totally recommend you check out if you want something that you can just sit back and relax to and just enjoy the bloody music. But my number one EP of the year has to be just from a group that, you know, have these guys I've admired for so long, honestly. I would regard them as influential. I would probably even regard them as legendary. You know, I've enjoyed many of their albums in the past. One of them is probably material for my top 10 albums of all time. Um, it's Massive Attack. Yep, the UK trip-hop group Massive Attack, known for Mezzanine, known for making the theme tune to House, known for Blue Lines, but they made a comeback this year with their EP called Ritual Spirit, and it was, front to back, four of the best tracks they've ever made in years. It's structured so well, the progression from the first track to the last is just like this massive building up of tension, and uh, just each track is hypnotic on its own, they're moody, they're kind of dark, 
The vocal guests they get on just do their features a lot of justice. There was not one moment where I was taken out of it and even despite the fact that it's only four tracks long, it's quite a short EP, I was very fulfilled by the end of it because honestly that final track was like the big climax of the, of the EP. Take it there. Um, oh dude, this EP is fantastic. If this EP is like any show of the material that Massive Attack will be putting out in the future, Hopefully, next year, they put out an album, please, Massive Attack, you, 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 you can do it, come on, album next year, please. Then I will be, you know, I'm, I'm, t I'm, oh, I'm excited, you know, this EP is so promising, there's no more words that I need to use really. Massive Attack, Ritual Spirit, favourite EP of the year, make sure that you check out some of these EPs because honestly, they're, they're great, they're great. Stick around for my top 50 albums, which are going to come out very soon. It's going to be the big conclusion to this channel's 2016 run. It's going to be fun. It's going to be very exciting. I'm going to announce my favorite album of the year. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later.